Jason Cameron here. Right, uh, streamer. So, um, in my last video, I sort of done a first look at streamer just to sort of get to understand the project a little bit more, um, what the project is about. So, if this if this is the first time you are hearing about streamer, I recommend that you check that video out. The link is in the bio. It will just bring you up to speed. Um, as in this video, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do an investment analysis on it just to help determine whether this project's worth partying with with our ether. Uh, with that's what we're looking to raise. Um, or used to raise. So, what I do with all the projects, all the ICOs that I look at, um, is I sort of grade them. So I grade them either A, B, or C. Um, it's not easy to get an A um, in my books. Uh, Bs are pretty solid, but I still need to sort of look at a few things with it. Um, Cs I stay away from. Um, don't want anything to do with Cs at all. Um, so I go through a few sort of criterias. Um, I put it on this document. Automatically scores it for me, tells me whether it's A, B, or C, and um, and then from there I make my investment decision. So, um, so what I'm going to do is going to share my opinion on those areas in this video. Um, so do sort of an investment analysis. Um, this is my, this is my opinion, guys. It's not investment advice. Do your own research. Um, invest at your own risk. Um, and don't blame me for any L's. Um, but I don't look for L's. I look for wins. And um, it doesn't mean I'm always going to get them, but that's kind of what I look for and why I and why I grade these mm -hmm. projects. So. What I'm going to um, just get this phone out of the way. It's going to start buzzing. Um, so, one of the first things I look at is I look at once I understand the project, I look at um, cool. Do they have a product? So, um, whether it's uh, a product actually out live, people actually buying, um, that grabs my attention massively. Um, whether there's a prototype there or like an MVP, some sort of software that can be taken a look at. Because uh, that actually tells us that there's actually something proven, um, a proof of concept done. Um, any, anything in the, in that sort of arena I kind of uh, look at and consider. Um, and that gets sort of um, bonus points um, for, for that. And that's really essential, really. It's not all... Yeah, so it's, it's, it makes it a strong proposition. Um, because it's very difficult for me to look at a project that's just a white paper, um, unless the guys behind it are amazing. Um, so, so if we look at the, these these guys' site, so they do they have a product? So they've got an editor here. So to me, that tells me they have a product. And if you, according to their white paper, they actually have guys actually using the pro the, the product. The product's actually live, um, and they have customers using it already. That really grabs my attention. So the reason why they're doing the ICO is because they are looking to move their project from a centralized system to a decentralized network. Um, hence, put it on a blockchain. So for me, that ticks the first box. That um, that grabs my attention massively because it's, that means there's already demand for the the product, the project. So. So for me, that's the first thing. I, one of the first things I look at. So these guys check a massive box there with customers. So the next thing I look at the team. So I understand the idea. Um, I understand they've got something out. So who is it that? Who are these guys that's got something out? So this is the team. So we've got nine guys here. Um, I don't look at everyone. I look at the leadership. Um, who's going to steer this? Who's going to uh, sort of? steer who's going to be on the front line bringing this team into battle um, and so I'm going to take a look at Henry here and I'm going to take a look at Nikkei that's currently mate sorry I haven't so if we look at Henry first he's a founder and CEO at Streamer um, so what I kind of look at is one, have they had any major achievements before? So have they been a part of any other major projects, uh, especially in blockchain? Um, if, they have, if they have, they had a big win already, um, or do they have relevant experience for over a long period of time in the in the project that they in the, in the industry of the project that that, that if we can how this in the industry that their project sits in. So if they have experience within that industry. Um, or if they've had a big win in the industry already, then uh, that ticks major boxes for me. So have a look at this guy. They already been working on Streamer for about two years now, so two and a half years um, before the whole ICO 
uh, phase. So this guy has algorithmic trading platform development experience, which uh, we had them for like the last six years. And this company called Ufeda and this company called Hedgehog OY. Um, and obviously he's been in, involved in software development uh, since uh, for another five years. So that's eight years experience there plus a two years. So that's 10 years experience in, in software development, platform development, which sort of verifies the claim here that he has 10 years experience in building infrastructure and tools for real-time data for 10 years, yeah, so. That you are right, Henry. So, the question is, how big were these companies? I mean, if he was a CTO, I wouldn't imagine them being massive. Yeah, it's not really here, is it? Um, sorry, I'm just trying to get used to this browser. This Chrome wasn't working for me. All right, so let's have a look here. You defeat a card for from that company. Cool. So one to ten employees, these guys. Two of them are on LinkedIn. So it's a couple of guys. Ugh, website's ugly, it's poor. Doesn't mean they weren't making money, but um, it's a bit poor. But what I will give Henry is that he has it out. Uh, a long track record in this space. I'm concerned about the level of the uh, companies that he's been involved in. Um, but he has experience in it. Unifina, Finland. I think I did find it, isn't it? No, because these guys are like a productive kind of thing. So no, I don't think this is it. Uh, feeder algorithmic trading. Should look the C's what comes up. Uh, cool. Absolutely nothing. However, there's been a few guys that's been involved in. Unifina. So you got Nikkei. Okay, cool. Uh, cool. So is this dude? Is this same company? Director of Investment Relations, Nokia. Budget partner, CEO of Unifina. Okay, hold on. Let's check this guy out. The only reason I'm looking at this guy is that. Um, so if this guy's was involved in Ufida, OY. Right, so this guy was part of NASDAQ OMX. Massive organization. <clears throat> then he was involved in Henry's company. Uh, which was Unifeeder. So managing partner there, CIO. And now he's part of director of Nokia. Investor Relations. So Someone of this guy's caliber to have been involved with a new feeder tells me that it would have been a worthwhile project. So Henry, you look all right, mate. You look all right. Cool. So that's Henry. So my bottom line is Henry is that he's not a world class. I wouldn't say he's a world class leader uh, because he has had a big win, but he has had solid experience in his field and worked with some good guys. So. So it's looking, it's looking all right. It's looking all right. So, Nikkei, um, so if I remember data and chains, these guys actually own a streamer. So, yeah, so they, they bought streamer. It's under, the, that brand is under this company, which is headed by Nikkei. And he is... Um, And what I like about Nikki is that I mean, he's part of Unifeeder as well, so I think that's that looks like it's quite a quite a decent project. Is that he has had experience in buying and selling companies. So what I like about that is that um, he knows what he, he's sort of a grassroots guy, so he knows what, what it takes to get in, build something up, make it valuable for it to be sold. So the fact that he's involved in this project gives me um, pretty. Um, 
pretty good confidence. So again, I, he, he hasn't he hasn't been with any anyone major. So, but I will say that his um, his experience in in his in data software development. And uh, from a top level point of view, getting in, building up, making it available, getting out, um, I think that's quite an essential experience to have part of the team. So, so, um, so he looks good. It looks pretty solid at the top. I uh, wouldn't say world class, but it looks pretty solid. So let me just have a look at the developer Eric Andrews. So I won't look at everyone. Look at just a couple of them. Streamer. So. Eric Andrews, software developer at Streamer. So, how many experience? Two, six months, two and a half, two and eleven. So that's just called that. Three and a half years, three and a half years, five and a half years. Software development, which is cool. Who's our media? Okay, this company looks pretty good. Okay, so it's a publicly traded company. So he's a solid guy. He's a solid developer, Eric. Good. Juso, let's have a look at this guy. Well, what I want to see is if anyone has um, blockchain experience. Okay, cool. Okay, so here we go. Here we go. Ethereum Wizard. So he's got experience in Solidity, EVM. Okay. Excellent. So... You, Who's he worked for? How much years experience? Two years here. Or just under two years, three years, kind of kind of four years, five years, five and a half years as a software engineer. He understands blockchains, coding in uh, coding for Ethereum. So the developers are really, really hard to get hold of. So the fact that they've got someone a part of their team in that is um, a big win. And this Finnish Finnish Institute place it's quite a lot of employees here on uh linkedin which is good so i'm looking here fish uh meteorological institute observes physical state chemical composition electrical phenomena of atmosphere which is okay blah, 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 blah. okay so it's like a research hub cool that's a big win if that we've got a solidity developer on their team excellent Team Solid, guys, but looks a bit Team Solid. So that's how I would look at. I mean, I would look at to see if there's anyone that's involved in marketing on this team, but there isn't. Um, that does concern me a little bit um, because he's going to go out there and sort of win the business, close the deals. It'll probably be Henry and Nikkei by the looks of things then. Um, but um, unless it's this guy. But look at this guy. is more sort of trading experience. Um, it's which of JP Morgan and Merrill Lynch, but... Um, for me, he's kind of the uh, general manager kind of guy by the looks of it. But, um, but okay, cool. So, no marketing guys. Who's the advisors? So, from what I understand with this project, is that they partnered with Golem. And um, so, hence why you see this guy as an advisor. And they've got, so these guys are actually developers. Wendell Davis, Thomas Greco, Alex uh, Levington, they're all developers. And they're an advisor in this project. And these guys have been involved in Ethereum, Golem, Abize Go, and Cosmo. So the fact that these guys have been with Amize Go, which like 30, 40 X this year, um, is a massive, massive win. These guys are part of the advisors. What I also look for is that um, do they have a legal structure or legal personnel in place? Especially in this day and age, SEC and so forth. Um, ICOs have got to be structured correctly. So people, investors don't get caught and screw themselves, don't get caught with their pants down. So the fact that we've got this guy here, Luca Muller and um, Nicola of, of Bitcoin Swiss helps me helps me see and understand that they guys have got those the the framework and organizational structure um, as, as as far as a financial point of view as well um, covered, which is excellent. So um, so they got solid advisors here. So the team looks solid. So I wouldn't say the what the team was world class because uh, advisors they're not the team, not going to deliver. They're just going to sort of be on the other end of the phone, but. The team as itself, the core team, I would definitely say is solid, um, which is good to see. Right, so now we look at the um, the community. So, 
community is a little bit um, ambiguous. It's a little bit um, subjective, really. Um, it's a little bit relative. Um, the reason why I say that is that first thing when, when people think of um, community, you think of social media uh, following. So these guys have got under sort of just under 5,000 um just under 5,000 followers on Twitter, which isn't bad. Uh, I wouldn't say it's huge, I wouldn't say it's lows, but it's not bad at all. Um, it's pretty solid. Um, their rock stream, um, I don't know if I can remember. Let's see if I can remember. Uh, I can't remember my login stuff. Um, I think it had about 1,000 people in their rock stream, if I remember correctly, or just over 1,000 at the time when I last logged in. Um, in my opinion, that's one aspect of community. Um, it isn't the whole community. The community is everyone. So the community is the team, how many people in the team, developers, the customers, which they have, um, and also the partners, which they have as well. So the fact that they're partners with Golem, uh, which is a massive project, and they have, they have uh, advisors in the space of Golem and Amise Go. So if, if they're in with Golem, they're in with Amise Go, hence with these guys. So the fact they have customers, the fact that they have, um, they have a decent sized development team, um, and they have strong advisors, um, that are well networked individuals so that tells me that these guys are well networked and that tells me the community is pretty strong um, in my opinion so so I, I think their community is um, but um, it can be deceiving by the looks of it um, but it's stronger than it looks so they get they get pretty strong marks for me on their community um, so that's that's kind of the the um, the fundamentals I look at as terms of the project. And um, the next thing I'd like to take a look at is their token metrics. Now, obviously demand for a project is um, is an indicator. Um, I don't know how much you guys know, but with this project, they actually had a pre-sell. And the pre-sell, I think it was about 5 million Swiss francs. I think it was not too far from that, but the minimum contribution uh, was five thousand Swiss francs, uh, which is effectively five thousand dollars, and they sold out over twenty five minutes. So the fact they had a minimum of that size, and they sold out in twenty five minutes of their pre sale, uh, to me that's a clue. Um, and now we're moving on to their. Their token sales. So their token sales on October the sixth. No, it's not. Let's have a look here. So their token sale is starts on the twelfth, depending on what you get in at, whether it's a small cap or a large cap. A uh, large cap starts on the thirteenth. Their registration is currently open. Uh, it closes uh, tomorrow, which is the 9th of October. And um, looking to raise thirty million uh, Swiss francs or thirty million US dollars. They give their maximum total available is a billion, which is um, is pretty high if you ask me. A billion tokens, you are giving away sixty five percent, six hundred and fifty million tokens, which um, which is pretty generous on thirty million um, Swiss francs, and for one Swiss franc or one dollar, it's about eighteen uh, tokens. So I think that works out to about five cents. So let's just work it out. So one dollar divided by eighteen twenty five. Yeah, so it's about five, six cents, five, six Swiss francs, cents, uh, whatever. So, so the price, the the market cap, is is pretty good. Um, to be transparent for you, companies are not really raising more than thirty million nowadays. Um, I think um, anywhere between sort of thirty to fifty million is very rare nowadays. Um, but thirty million is a good ask. It's not too high, and um, and I'm, I'm not sure if it will sell out or not. I'll be interested to see what happens when it does go live. Their their lot their registration. Um, if you haven't already registered with uh, Bitcoin Swiss before, it is a little bit arduous. Um, so that might turn people off. Might have people waiting for exchanges. And um, but the fundamentals of 
of the Toko Matrix is pretty solid. It's not too expensive. Uh, it's not an obscene amount of coins. There are a little bit. There are a few coins there, uh, t- data tokens that are being issued, but it's not an issue about to warm out. Um, so again, that, that got a pretty solid score for me. Um, my concerns about this project is that it's a big project. Um, and it might be a long-term project. There is no roadmap there, um, as you probably noticed, and sort of having a, a look in their chats and stuff. The reason why they don't want to overpromise and underdeliver, um, still a bit concerned about that. Anyway, a roadmap is pretty is is pretty standard nowadays. I don't see why they they wouldn't issue a roadmap, but I don't want to issue one and then not deliver on it. Which I understand, but that tells me it's a really massive project. It's a really massive undertaking. They just say they expect to take three to five years to deliver. So it might be a long-term hold, depending on the demand for for the token. Um, what else am I concerned about? Um, so the fact that it's a big project, um, it's a bit of a Hail Mary play. So they're going long. And if... And the, the, the downside of that is that they might not make the catch, yeah? So if they don't make the catch, then whatever I've put in it, I've lost. Um, but the upside is, if they do deliver, I don't see a company that won't want to use their network. Um, the competition might, be, might, might become fierce um, in this space. And if someone's... Um, the fact that they've already got something out there that's working, but it's centralised... Um, they are ahead, but whether they can translate over to the blockchain um, uh, successfully and sort of um, win a good time frame before competitors come in and start trying to try to get into that space um, is a bit of a question mark, really. So, if they make the catch, though, the upside could be huge. Um, even a lot of these ICO opponents coming out now, they would want to use a network like Streamer, in my opinion. So um, it has massive upside. Um, and this actually got graded a B um, in my grading system. So it got a strong B. Um, so because of that, uh, because of the upside, I will be investing. I have actually registered for their white li- uh, their white list already. Um, so this is kind of why I wanted to share it with you guys. Um, if, um, if there's anything that I missed, guys, or you, if it's something that you guys saw that I didn't see, then drop a comment in the uh, the box below. But um, but but yes, that's streamer. So um, not long to get into the whitelist now. See so if you are considering it. Just get it done. At least he, he gives you the option. So if you do change your mind, you don't have to do it. But at least you're there if you, if you do uh, decide to go ahead with it. Um, but again, this is an investment advice, guys. My opinion. Um, invest in your own risk and do your own research but if you've enjoyed this video please pound that thumbs up button pound that subscribe button um let me know that you, you like this stuff um if you've got any friends or family or colleague that are interested in investing in cryptocurrencies icos please um yeah recommend my channel i would greatly appreciate that and um join my telegram group as well guys um there's not a lot of stuff i can cover in time on the video so i normally just drop it down there in my telegram group so uh so yeah links below join us and um, we get some inside information there. So um, stuff that I am looking at that I haven't got a chance to do a video on. So uh, yeah, thanks for your time. Talk to you soon.